Good morning. Welcome to uh, outside of my house. You can actually see that I've got my phone forward facing pointed towards me, pretty hydrangea in the background. And what's behind me right there, uh, those are the tanks up to date so far with Fish Room Expansion, their Aquarium Masters, 230 breeders, 10 15 gallon tanks so pretty awesome i've got them painted to this point i've drilled two of them i've drilled one of the 30 breeders one of the 15s and i did that to make sure that before i completely unwrapped everything and started painting that they were non-tempered glass um, i'll talk a little bit more about well, a lot of you probably know if it's tempered glass you can't drill it it'll just crack and explode completely waste your tank um, so i wanted to make sure before i painted everything that I checked to make sure that they weren't tempered. And fingers crossed, thank God they were not tempered. So that's awesome. So let me go ahead and show you these tanks and see what I've done so far. We've got painted 15 gallons. We've got two painted 30 gallon breeders right here. Um, and so basically what we've done is with only two holes. Now these two holes are probably the most nerve wracking holes that I've ever drilled. Not so much for that 15 gallon right there. You know, usually they don't put tempered glass in a tank of that size. But these 30 breeders though, when I actually ordered these tanks, uh, there was an option for tempered or not tempered. And I made sure that with my supplier, you know, I specified several times, you know, make sure it's the non-tempered, make sure it's the non-tempered. Because if these are tempered tanks, these are no good to me. So I run in my fish room an overflow system, otter water change with drilled overflows um, leading out to a, to a drain basically. And so having tanks that I would have to use a siphoned started overflow system just would not work. So these tanks would be completely dead to me. So very, very nerve wracking drilling this. And as you can see, we have a drilled hole. Time is of the essence. And my goal with this, and I, I do one coat. I slap it on there as thick as I possibly can with the roller, and I just want it to be one and done. What I will suggest, since I use Rust-Oleum enamel, like oil-based paint, this stuff is the devil. These disposable gloves are amazing. They're black, so you look super cool when you're doing it. Makes it look like you're a tattoo artist or something. This is the bucket that I've used to paint countless tanks now. Well, not countless, they're all in the fish room. So maybe 30 tanks plus these guys and a whole bunch of that three-quarter inch plywood. This is what it looks like. This is how sloppy Randy gets when he's painting. I don't care. I don't have time for the cleanliness. You'll see the sloppiness. You'll see, you'll see the overrun. You'll see some, some oozing effect, some, some dripping down as I've moved these tanks into different positions while the paint is still wet. From the inside, granted there's a lot of reflection, you can't even tell. Once you're in the fish room, nobody is gonna pay attention to uh, the black frame and any potential over um, overage that you may have. What I've learned with painting tanks, one of the things that I utilize on my Gladiator racks is I will put three quarter inch plywood and I will paint both sides and I'll even paint uh, the, four, the four edges. That's black. I don't need to paint the bottom of the tanks anymore. So that saves me one side to paint. And the way that I have this one actually oriented, and this is actually exactly how it's gonna go on a top rack of a Gladiator rack, I don't need to paint um, three sides. I actually only need to paint two sides. So every single one needs to have the back painted for sure. And then from there, you only really need to paint one side. So that side can be see-through because the tank right next to it is gonna be painted and so on, and so on. The only thing you need to be careful of is the ends. So you have to make sure that you're alternating and you've at least got two end tanks that will line up in this manner so that you actually have blacked out ends. For the 30 breeders, those guys will be on shelves where it is one 30 breeder, two 15s next to it. The 30 breeders are painted on all three sides. And then I made sure that these tanks, granted, they're laying down on their sides, but if I were to arrange them like this, it would be the same scenario. And I'm gonna have black on those ends.
Done. All right, so now what is left? What's left is I need to drill the remaining nine, 10 some odd tanks. And to do that, you need fine diamond cutting bit. I don't even remember the size. I think when you buy these, first did the fish, the fish room build. Um, I knew what size this was. Now I don't. Maybe it's listed on here somewhere. And this is by no means a DIY. This is just going to be me, what I'm doing to prepare for the fish room. So there are way, way, way better videos that are going to show you exactly how to do this. This guy right here, this is super helpful because this guy is your guide. You'll see me use this thing, but this is how you start your hole. But what I've found is once you actually start the hole and you get a nice little groove of where you're going to cut, then you can just freehand it. So I hope you enjoyed my first ever YouTube video. Hit the like button, drop some comments, let me know what you think, and I'll see you later.